Welcome back to Aim Excursions. I'm Alex. I'm Misty. And we have a new and improved Universal Yums unboxing for you today. This is the June Universal Yums box. Be sure to click the subscribe button and ring that bell. Make sure you don't miss anything that we do. If you're unfamiliar with Universal Yums, they are an outstanding subscription service that provides a wide variety of snacks from a different country each month. I'm excited to see what we got this month, so let's get into this. So am I. Let's open it. We are going to Colombia this month. All right. I'm not going to uh, turn this over because it tells you what's on the back, but this is a little kind of fun and games type thing. Tells you some things about the country, like how what their animals are, some specific places, and things such as that. So we're going to lay that to the side. And then it comes also comes with this booklet that tells you what the things are in your box and as we go along I will go through and read to you what the boxes are or excuse me what's in the box oh, there you go. <laughs> okay and this month we're gonna start with it's called Turbana plantain chips and they are garlic flavored so that's what that looks like hmm. Interesting. at least it's got English on it this month yay yeah. do you want to hand me the scissors oh yes I forgot about those Tinkerbell yeah. That's what they remind me of. Oh, well, that's going to taste funky. Yeah, it is. Garlic plantain chips. Wow. So, what plantains are is a banana, basically. Um, it says bananas and garlic. Ooh. Fortunately, these chips aren't bananas, but rather Colombian plantains. Ever wonder what the differences are between them? Bananas grow six to eight inches long and have a thin peel, while plantains grow twice that size and have a peel so thick that you need a knife to remove it. Second, bananas can be eaten raw, while plantains must be cooked. They're far too bitter to be eaten uncooked. So that's interesting. So they are not bananas like I had thought. Mm. Let's go ahead and give that a try. So that's what we look like. It's really thin. It looks straight up like a banana, but... It's not too strong. Okay. So it says the heavy dose of garlic pairs well with plantains, but this is definitely a flavor combination you'd never, ever want to try with bananas. That's actually pretty good. I don't think I want to try those. Go for it. I don't care for garlic. Good. Nah. Might be surprised. But keep the vampires away. That is delicious, actually. Yeah, that is really, That's really good. very good. Yeah, I like that. All right. So All the next right. thing. What we got here? Hold on. I find it in our little booklet. Lime flavored potato chips, pretty much, is what they are. Lime flavored potato chips. They look delicious. Wow. I don't think I've ever had lime flavored potato chips. I don't think I have. I've had lime flavored uh, tortilla chips. They're pretty Can they good. be the same? Um, they might taste a little different because they're potato chips and not tortilla chips. But I don't know. Let's oh, see smell. what it says about these. This product is perplexing, and we're not just talking about its quirky flavor combination. To see what we mean, glance at the package. What fruit do you see? A lime, without a doubt, but look closer, and you'll find the words lemon flavored. So yeah. what flavor are these? In many Spanish-speaking languages, lima means lime, and limon means lemon. In Colombia, however, limon means both lemon and lime. Why? It's a matter of supply and demand. Limes grow in warm climates like that of Colombia, whereas lemons thrive in more moderate climates. As a result, lemons are so rare in Colombia that local Spanish speakers lump them in with limes, which explains why the flavor on the package of these lime chips got a bit lost in translation. Who knew citrus lingo could be so confusing? That is confusing. Oh, don't worry, despite the unusual pairing of lime and potato, this zesty yum will have you saying one word that's impossible to mix up. Delicioso. Whoa, boy. <laughs> Strong? I like lime. <laughs> wow. I like lime flavored things, so these will probably be. Uh -uh. Um, no? <laughs> that is delicious. Oh, my gosh. That was um That is so good. That was full on salt and vinegar right there. Oh that, my god. That's probably what oh oh there's that back kick. Oh I'm so Ooh. glad I have something to drink. <laughs> All right. Shout out to Mountain Dew, not sponsored. 
Oh, well, that's a kick. Oh, and I just drank orange citrus behind it. Oh, <laughs> that was not smart. It was also very good. Oh, boy. That'll kick you in the pants right there. Woo. All right. All right what I, we got? I am dying to try this one. This is my favorite thing in America. These are risottas mayonnaises. Can anybody figure out what that is? Mayonnaise flavored potato chips. I cannot wait. Why not? Yeah, you got to open everything. Slice her now. Well, there is trash on the floor. All right, here we go. That's a little different. It's not bad, but it's good. A little ruffled. So let's see. Colombians are known for excellence in many areas, but today we'll touch on only one. Condiments. Generations of locals have created an accompaniment for every dish imaginable. Zesty cilantro salsa for empanadas. Creamy avocado sauce for fried sauce for fried green plantains and many, many more. You can try in your hand at your own condiment creations with the recipes on page 18. Oh, cool. As you'll see in the recipes, there's one ingredient that Colombians frequently use as a jumping off point for new saucy concoctions. Mayonnaise, of course. These have been many, there have been many variations over time. Mixing mayonnaise with ketchup to make their iconic salsa rosada. Or adding in handfuls of chopped garlic to make salsa de aho, aho. Aho. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce these that well. Now they've paired it directly with crispy potato chips for one of the most innovative condiment creations we've ever seen. Cool. They were pretty good. I like them. They're decent, but I, I, I can't really place the flavor. It doesn't taste like mayonnaise to me. It, I can't really taste them. You know, place the, the flavor of that. All right, here you go. Word. I'm gonna let you open that one. Yeah, let me open this one. Oh, all right. So we got some bacon chips. Oh no no. With lime. They're bacon and lime chips. Bacon Tos and lime chips. Tosinata limon. That sounds. Hmm. I hope it ain't like the other ones. Oh wow. Bacon. Some might argue it's America's favorite food, but that honor has already been taken by Colombia. Colombia's oh. national food, banda, bandeja pesa, features a dinner's portion of fried pork belly, called chicharron, alongside rice, beans, ground beef, chorizo, plantains, cornbread, avocado, fried egg, and lots of lime. This impressive dish was cre first created in the 1950s for hardworking farmers who required heaping helpings of food to fuel their long work days. Try saying that four times fast. Wow. That sounds difficult to me. Okay. So these bacon and lime chips, you're getting a taste of Colombia's most beloved and historic meal. Oh, it's shaped like bacon. Isn't Check that, that cute? <laughs> that is adorable. And it's thick. It's like puffy. Slightly scared of Oh, here's another little bit of history for the Yum's box. <laughs> oh, God. Each time they visited Colombia in 2015, 2017, and now 2019, they've put these chips in the box. Apparently, they're not as good as I thought they would be. <laughs> it's just like those. Uh-oh. Uh. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> I'm going to tell you one thing. You don't get bacon. The first thing you get is that lime Ooh. flavor. It smacks you in the tongue. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm sorry, but I can't finish that. That's going to have to go trash. Woo. That's potent. <laughs> it's not bad. It's different. And that's that's what I like about these things. They're completely different than what we get here. It is. In that you expect the bacon at least a little bit, but it's... It's a very slight hint of bacon, and then the rest of it just kicks you in the face. Ah, all right. <clears throat> what are you going for now? Um, I'm kind of interested in this queso mantequilla. So let me find it in the book. Oh, sure. right there it is in front of me. Oh, there you go. Arepa-inspired corn tortilla chips with cheese and butter flavor. Now, see, those are three things I like. Mm -hmm. It's got a little man on it playing a drum on the bag. Ain't he cute? <laughs> He's adorable. Well, this has got my favorite thing. Cheese. Oh, and I keep dropping things in the floor, so that's what we're looking down at. It's all right. It'll be all right. All right, so tortilla chips. 
That's delicious. Yeah, right, hold on. Let me get this screwed down and we'll figure this out. While it may look similar, this is not your typical tortilla chip. This is an arepa chip. Arepa, 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 I don't know. Of course, you might be wondering, what's an arepa? Arepas are thin rounds made from ground corn and then grilled, baked, fried, or steamed. Locals have been preparing that word <laughs> for over a century, whether eaten alone as a side dish or stuffed with toppings. They have a place in nearly every Colombian meal. That's pretty cool. It is pretty good. It's got a good uh, good queso flavor. But the chip is really strange to me. It's like a, a much... Dense. Dense. Yeah, much more dense. Uh, dense. Tortilla chip. But, but the cheese really and the butter is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, you can taste really the cheese and the butter yeah. real good. It's like, it reminds me of popcorn. Maybe a little bit, yeah. Okay. I'm let you go next. I'm going to try these things. What, 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 what are these things? They're plantain cookies. Oh, crud. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You know the phrase, jack of all trades? Plantains win that award in the fruit world. As one of the most multifaceted fruits on earth, plantains particularly prove their versatility through Colombian cuisine. The fruits are grilled, roasted, boiled, fried, sauteed, smashed, and stuffed into countless unique dishes from sweet treats like sweet stuffed plantain balls to savory delights like creamy plantain soup. That's not all. Locals use every bit of the plant, even wrapping tamales in the plantain's thick, rigid leaves. Given the flexibility of this fruit, it shouldn't be a surprise to hear that Colombians often eat it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. While the garlic, garlic plantain chips you tried earlier are a great lunch item, this variation on plantains is for those with a sweet tooth. If you try both of them back to back, you'll see just how different the fruit can taste depending on its use. A jack of all trades, indeed. I'm going to go pass on the back to back. I believe I will, too. So, oh, they're we cute. got these cute little cookies. They look things. like chocolate chip cookies, but they're plantains. That's amazing. Or do they have chocolate in them, I wonder? It tastes like, um, first off. Oh, cool. I grabbed a double. There you go. It tastes chip. like shortbread cookies. Yeah. Yeah. It tastes to like, it. not trying to name drop, tastes like Girl Scout shortbread cookies. Not as good, though. Just saying. But it's delicious. Those are really good. After Those you chew for a while, the plantain flavor hits you in the mouth. Hits you in the back. Yeah. It's, That's it's, so uh, good. That's it's so good. Really good. Oh, it's my favorite. Those are nice. Well, Those are nice. Besides the mayonnaise and the queso chips, are, that's my favorite so far. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. All what right. Let me find it the book and we'll figure out what this is. I think it's kind of like our wafer cookies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wafers with coconut cream filling. Huh. That's what these are. All right. Uh. When you think coconuts, you probably think of the tropics, Florida, the Caribbean. South America, so it might surprise you that coconuts aren't native to any of those places. What? Scientists have actually traced their origins all the way to the other side of the world. They believe the Spanish brought an Asian coconut strain to the Pacific coast of South America, and the Portuguese brought an Indian coconut strain to the Caribbean. So which one grows in Colombia? Both! Since Colombia borders the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea, the country is covered in both kinds of coconut trees. The sweet coconut cream inside this wafer is made from a blend of Colombia's coconut species, then slathered on four crispy, lightly chocolatey layers of wafer. Wow. <laughs> With its far-reaching roots and incredible flavor, this is one truly universal yum. Oh, yes, please. So this is what oh, you get. so good. These things are, are massive. Massive. They're delicious, too. There are a lot of, I'm noticing there are a lot of chocolate things in this bar, this in this uh, box this month. This is so good. Mmm. I don't care for coconut that much, but this is delicious. That is really good. Yeah. That's got a really good, really good coconut taste. Excuse me for talking with my mouth full. I kind of do that. Or uncivilized. I wasn't raised proper. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> These things are really good. 
um, they're not too sweet, and they have a really good coconut flavor. They are delicious. Those are really good. Mm. And now I have crumbs everywhere. I think I do too. That's okay. I'm gonna finish mine. All right. Mm. There we go for now. Let's set the yum bag to the side. Yep, as always last. I don't know how to say this word, so I'm gonna butcher it. Bianchi bar, Carmelo and Monty. All right. Oh, chocolate coated caramel and peanut bar wafer. And we got two of those. Cool. So I'll let you have that. All right. Pull the world's finest chocolate comes from Belgium, Italy, and Colombia. Yep, you read that right. The cacao plant is native to Colombia, meaning locals have been enjoying chocolate for centuries. Colombia is now the 11th largest exporter of chocolate, and its products are extraordinary. A whopping 95% of the country's chocolate has been deemed fine of superior quality and flavor by the International Cacao Organization. Wow, that's cool. So this is that's the adorable. chocolate bar. It's adorable. It almost looks like a Milky Way or something. Well, it's peanut caramel and peanut bar. Kind of reminds me of Paydays. There you go. Only it's not chocolate covered Pay. Mm -mm. Nutrageous bar. Mm -hmm. In America, that's what this would be. This is like a nutrageous bar. That's good. Yeah, it is. I, that's one of my favorite candy bars, nutrageous. I'm making such a mess. It is chewy. <laughs> it's delicious. Mm -hmm. White chocolate coated gummies. True Lulu. I kid you not. That's what it says. True Lulu. Those are cute. Oh, they're gummy bears. Are they gummy bears? It says white chocolate gummies, and then you look, and there's a little gummy bear on the packaging. Know. I'll get it out in a minute. I will, yeah, I it, promise. It's like it's like a gummy bear inside of a, mm -hmm. a little capsule. Okay, here That's we go. If you lived in Colombia, you'd often see this chocolate-coated gummy candy at parties. And not just any party, but one specific celebration. Can you guess what it is? Hint. Look at the candy's colors. Extra hint. It's not Easter. It's a quinceanera. But for Colombians, a girl's 15th birthday is a big deal. It marks her transition into adulthood, which is celebrated with the Fiesta de Quinceaños, commonly known as the quinceanera. So what does this party entail? First, there's a father-daughter waltz, then a dance party, and later in the night, there's a crazy hour. When partygoers blow whistles and put on masks to keep the celebration going strong, like at a wedding, one of the highlights of the night is seeing the birthday girl make an entrance in an elaborate pastel colored dress. Now you can see the colorful collection. The bright colors of these True Lulu candies make them a perfect party snack for quinceaneras. Grab a few pieces and get your own party going. I'm still eating the piece from before, so. So, that's what we got. So cute. They're, uh, they're like jelly bean looking things, but <laughs> I'm curious to see if they actually have gummy bears on them. I hope they do. Give me one. I'll try it. Oh, uh, it's stuck together. <laughs> well, that I too. Oh, that's different. It's an M&M with a gummy in it, basically. Yeah. It's delicious. That is really good. <laughs> That's the weirdest flavor in my mouth. I have the chocolate left over with whatever the flavor of this gummy berry is. That's not a good combo <laughs> whatsoever. Sounds interesting. It's not. It's really bad. And that flavor of the gummy bear that I got, it's really bad. I don't know if they have the flavors on there. They don't have any in the book. Mm -mm. It's just chocolate covered gummies is what they say. That's strong. It's interesting. It's like a um, sort of like a, a somewhat sour kind of gummy bear flavor or gummy flavor. I don't know if it's actually a gummy bear, but it's a gummy flavor. Get that nasty taste out of my mouth. But they're good. I like them. Well, you can have those. All right. All right. So the next thing we have we've got two things left that are in the box so i'm gonna pull these 
Oh, they're from the same company, Trulalu Fositas. They are strawberry and cream gummies. Cool. Okay. Fly into Columbia, and one of the first things you'll try is this candy. Kind of. Columbia's most famous dessert called Fresas con Crema. It's famously served at roadside style surrounding major airports, made in the first taste of Columbia for many visitors. Made with a very delicious blend of cream fresh, sweet and condensed milk, and farm fresh strawberries, it isn't just a great post-flight snack, it's also the inspiration behind this yum. By now, you're probably on your fifth or sixth taste of Columbia, but after one bite of this, you'll get a real sense for something we haven't brought up yet, Columbia's intense love of strawberries. In addition to Fresas con crema, Colombians, Colombians go crazy for meringue on fresa, a mix of juicy strawberries, whipped cream, and crispy meringue, and sal, salpicon de frutas, a sweet cocktail of sparkling soda and diced strawberries with vanilla ice cream. It should be no surprise that these strawberry gummies are another favorite for Colombians. So, that's what we got right there. They got the uh, the sugar coating on it. Yep, that's good. You can never go wrong with strawberries and cream. Right. It's I mean, delicious. It's really good. Again, and, it's not too sweet. And then we have a box called... I'm going to butcher we're, this we're, again. Uh, all right. We're going to butcher some more. All right. Caja de Dolce Sortidos. Assorted Colombian sweets. All right. So we have a milk caramel, a coffee, a guava, a panela, an orange, and a coconut. Okay. I'll let so you I'm, open. I'm glad to see that we at least, from Colombia, we at least have one thing of coffee. This month, we've brought you something better than one yum, six of them. Inside this specialty box, you'll find assortment of traditional Colombian sweets, each with its own unique flavor and story. Don't fret, we'll be your guide in exploring this special set of yums. All right, which All one right. you gonna pull out first? Um, I don't know. I don't know which one's which. Guess what? I think this is the coffee one. Is it coffee? I'm matching the, the thing to what, what it looks like in the book. Yes, I believe this is the coffee one. So this, this Let me see this one. That looks like a toffee This is square. the coconut one. That looks like a toffee square. That to is the one. milk caramel. Milk caramel. That's uh That is either the panela or the orange because the panela and the orange look the same. That's, that's the wicked. orange, I'm sure. That's wicked looking. Yeah, that's the orange. And yeah, we got that one. And that, well, one of them's a guava. Oh, this is the guava. That's guava. And mm -hmm. this is the orange because it's lighter. So, what do you want to try first? Um, you want the coffee? I'm gonna try the coffee. I'm gonna I take mean, the is, milk caramel. This is Columbia. Columbia. I gotta try the coffee from Columbia. There goes some more trash. More trash oh. to the floor. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm trying to see if it tells you on here which one it is, but it does not. And Ooh, I can't. It does good, I can't good smell coffee. Stamp, you know. It did kind of melt a little bit in the uh, the box. These it's are been, the times you wish you took Spanish in high school. <laughs> it's been a little warm, but that's what it looks like. Oh. Uh oh. That was unexpected. I expect it to be a little bit thicker than. <laughs> That is, that mine's good. What 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 did you get? The milk caramel. Milk caramel. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> this is the simplest sweet in the assortment, made using a basic Colombian dulce de leche recipe of only condensed milk and sugar. That's not to say it's boring. Sometimes simply simpler is sweeter. Not in this case. It's not good. Let's try. Here. Let's see what that tastes like. Oh, you better you want, eat all that. Mm, mm, mm. I can't. It's too soft. It's stuck to the roof of my mouth. Mm. Oh, God. That's horrible. I do not care for that one. It's horrible. So it's 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 not good. <laughs> um, but the uh the the powder on the outside oh, is not um. 
the powdered sugar that I was expecting. It's the same mm. same thing from the other box, the like cornstarch or something. Mm -hmm. And that kind of adds a strange flavor to it. So yeah, that was not that was not very good at all. The funny thing about it is, is they're both made of dolce de leche. Yeah, but that one. <laughs> and that one just bit the dust, so it doesn't matter that we didn't like it. This one's actually not that bad. I like that the one coffee. I like. The coffee I one's like good. The coffee one. It's got a good flavor right. to it. I'm assuming this is the guava one. All right. The guava paste you see on top is called bocadillo. Made from guava pulp and sugar cane. When bocadillo is combined with dolce de leche, it makes for one of the most... Mm -hmm. Hey, bye box. <laughs> It makes for one of the most beloved and famous combinations in all of Colombia. Yeah, that's all you. I can't do this dulce de leche. I don't care for that to start with, even though I know it's like caramel based. I'm going to have such a sugar rush. <laughs> you are. <gasps> There's avocado dip instructions in the back and spicy Colombian salsa. That's the recipes that that oh, one uh, was talking about. All I right. am down for this avocado dip. So it's like a two layer thing. That's the guava, right? Guava paste. I'm not, I'm not digging that. You've got it turned upside down. Though. It don't matter. <laughs> I'm just saying. They were talking about that bit on top. Is that good? That is a weird texture. What's up? So, the top part, the light one, is like a, a more solid, and the bottom is like a gummy. It is really weird. It's like a gel. So the flavor common, uh, the flavor is okay, but the texture combination is really weird. To transport sugar more easily, Colombians created vanilla or solid blocks of unrefined cane sugar. With a flavor that's slightly sweeter than brown sugar, vanilla quickly went from a convenience to a countrywide craving. It's now a Colombian delicacy. So that's what that looks like in the container. All right, let's see what we got. Right. Unrefined cane sugar. Tastes like sugar. It's just a sugar. Basically. It's a little rough. Yep. That one's uh, that was super sweet. Yeah. Okay, so I, she's right. I can't. I can't really taste really you much can't of taste a flavor. anything. It's just sugar. It's just like a sugar just a cane. block of sugar, like it says. It's just a block of unrefined cane sugar. That's basically all it is. Okay, so the next one is the, I believe it's the orange. Surprising bits of orange peel are one of the many delights of this unique caramel. Plus, its bright acidity will become a relief if you're looking for a yum that's a little less sweet. All right, here we go. I like orange, so this should be up my alley. So far, nothing that we've tasted I like except the coffee. Out of this little box? Yeah. Oh! Yep, that's orange, all right. <laughs> it's good, though. It's not as bad as the other ones. It's really not. That's a lot better than the ones I've tried. And I like the coffee one. But that like reminds it. me of um, our uh, little, oh, little orange fruit slices. Orange fruit slices. Yes, that's, that's exactly what, it what that like. tastes like. That is pretty good, though. All right, so this one looks like it's a little beat up, too. It's all squished out. But it's supposed to be coconut. So, chunks of real coconut add a fun tropical texture to this extra sweet caramel. It's undeniably different from the others, but it may just be our favorite. What was yours? Uh, the orange. Yep, it's got coconut in it for sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't care for that. I don't like the gritty texture. What and let me go ahead and point out that all of the ingredients that are in all of these are listed on the page in the book up underneath the descriptions of what they are. So that's a good thing. They tell you what's in it in case, in case you might be allergic to something before you actually try it, you can see what's in it. 
So there's that, another flavor to this. What what is that? Just coconut. It's just coconut. Mm -hmm. Oh, what? caramel. They're calling it a caramel. There ain't nothing caramel about this. It's okay. It's, it's got a, a, a good coconut flavor, but it's a really weird The reason flavor after. I don't like coconut is because it's stuck in your teeth and you've still got it after after you've eaten it, yeah, it's the, still stuck. The, I've still got it in my mouth and I don't the care shaved for that. The coconut. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that does that. happen. That other, the, yeah, these, the, the wafers, those were really good. Yeah, the coconut wafers, that was good. I, I forgot we did have a coconut, another coconut thing. Yeah. All right, so we're going to open the yum bag for this month. And what the yum bag is, is it's the smaller pieces that they didn't want to get lost in the box and uh, possibly fall out during shipping, maybe. So they put it in this cute little bag and call it the yum bag. And it's got little pretzels and fruits and candies and stuff like that. I don't know if you can see it that great, but it's cute. So you know the phrase, good things come in small packages. The yum bag is that phrase embodied. So let's dump it out and see what we got. Oh, two of my oh, favorite sucker. things. Yeah, these are two of my favorite things. And funny enough, you can get these suckers in America at the Dollar Tree, the Bon Bon Bum. And what they are is these two are passion fruit with bubble gum in the middle. I love to buy these, they are delicious. So I have had experience with these since I shop at the Dollar Tree. Shout out to the Dollar Tree, not sponsored. <laughs> the, let's see. Yeah, passion fruit lollipop with bubble gum center. This isn't a lollipop. It's a Bon Bon Bum. Interesting name, huh? In Colombia, the word bum is pronounced like boom. Referring to the explosion of flavor inside of the lollipop. So there you go. The next thing we got are called Super Coco Teredito, and they are chewy coconut candy. And we got four of those. Cool. So there's four of these. I will give you one of these. Well, I'll there you throw go. it at you. That works too. And what it says about these. Every superhero has an origin story. For Super, the company behind this famous yum, that story started in 1948 in the city of Manizales. Back then, the company was called <laughs> Superman and consisted of just eight people making chewing gum and coconut candies. A lot has changed in 71 years. The company gained 1,600 employees, trimmed its name to Super, and added gummies, mints, and chocolate to their product line. But no superhero can forget their roots. Even after all their success, Super is still best known for their original coconut candy, the one you're holding in your hand, the Super Coco. Uh, roasted coconut sweet is one of a kind with a hard texture that slowly becomes soft in your mouth, allowing you to savor the candy's rich flavor the entire time. It's a Tootsie Roll. Oh, wow! <laughs> That's cute. Love it. Oh, the next things we've got, you're oh, going to love, dear. How is it? Very chewy, like a Tootsie Roll. That's awesome. So while he's chewing on that little mm -hmm. nugget, mm -hmm. we have Cafe Gourmet Coffee Flavor Chews. So that's what these are. And we got four of those. And as you heard, he wanted to see some coffee flavored things or some coffee chips. So he got two things that are flavored coffee. Columbia is the largest exporter of Arabica coffee and the third largest exporter of all coffee varieties for all of you trivia players. But that doesn't include all the coffee they keep. Colombians have been gaga for Java ever since it was introduced to the nation in the late 18th century. It's consumed morning and night by both adults and children and grown all over the country. Coffee is often ordered based on where in Colombia the beans were grown. For a rich cup, Colombians will ask for coffee from the northern region of Satander, where warm temperatures make for a full-bodied roast. But if they want something a bit more acidic and sweet, they'll order a roast from south regions like Nariño and Huila, where especially high altitudes give the beans a flavor boost. With a coffee culture this intense, it's no wonder Colombians are also big fans of coffee candy. As soon as you pop this soft candy in your mouth, you'll see that they have good reason to be obsessed. This thing, it's it's not really the same consistency as... Uh, the Super Cocoa? Yeah, it's not really the same consistency as a uh, Tootsie Roll. Uh, it's kind of hard when you first bite into it, and it most definitely sticks around. Oh, really? 
But while we're trying candies, I'm just going to bust into the passion fruit lollipop. Well, let's check out this coffee thing. Oh, this is cool. It looks like a passion fruit. <laughs> it's got like little seed looks in it. Let's see what it tastes like. Yep, that's passion fruit. <laughs> wow. It's pretty potent, but it's really good. So there's your coffee square. There's a, hmm, there's a trash can under the table is what I'm reaching for. <laughs> that's pretty good. Is it? Mm -hmm. That's good. So I think we like the candy bag most of all. <laughs> the yum bag, excuse me. I believe we liked it most. All right. So in the back of the book, they have um, how to draw certain things from Columbia. And I'm going to just show it to you. And then they have amazing animals of the Amazon. Bring over a third of Columbia's island, the Amazon rainforest is home to some of the wackiest creatures on the planet, each with their own kooky characteristics. Can you match these Amazonian animals to the fascinating facts that describe them? And there's, there's a set over here and then you match the animal to it, of course. But I'm just going to read what animals they have listed. Um, a glass frog giant river otter, a South American tapir, mm, a green anaconda, don't like that one, a Hoatzin, a pygmy marmoset, a speckled worm lizard, and a potu. And so these are what those look right. like. That's interesting. And then, as I was saying earlier, they have recipes. There's one in here for avocado dip and the spicy Colombian salsa. And they give you what you need and how to make it and all that. The triv an trivia answer keys on the other side, which we're not going to look at that because I want to do the trivia I'm later. If you get the super yum box and they got Rosada's Picanticas, which is all the heat of Colombia's signature spicy sauce in a crunchy potato chip form. Hmm. Dolce de Leche wafers and Frutos Rojos made with Colombia's most fantastic fruit. So I'm assuming that's some kind of candy. Probably and yeah. then on the bottom, you mm -hmm. get the clue to next month's box, but we're not going to do that yet. So we're going to take and uh, do a little bit of a break and we're going to fill out the form, uh, take and show you guys what all we picked for best, worst, and weirdest. There's a couple weird ones in here. Uh, while we're doing that, let us know down below. Out of all of these snacks, which one would you most like to try? Which one would you definitely not try? And if you got this box, let us know what you thought and where you placed your items. We'll be right back. Uh, there are four categories. We have the weirdest, we have the worst, we have the second best, and our best. So, Mr. I'll go ahead and start. All right, with our, my weirdest were the bacon lemon chips. These, these are just weird to me. They didn't taste that bad, but they were just weird. That's two weird flavor combinations put together. And it really hit you with nothing but the lime. There was no bacon flavor whatsoever. So that's why it was weirdest to me. Alex, what was your weirdest? Uh, my weirdest, uh, I had to go with the, the, the gummy bear M&M kind of thing. They were weird. Uh, it's just that that texture and the, like the sweet or the sweet and the sour kind of flavor uh, to go with it. I Got agree. that crunch and then the, the, the gummy on the inside. Just a little weird texture for me. I will agree. And um, so the next category is our worst. For me, the worst was that box of six different kinds of caramels. I guess is what they were calling them. Yeah, like Nothing in that box something. was good. I found nothing in that box good whatsoever. That was the worst experience that I've had in this box. So my worst is actually her weirdest, and it has to, I have to go with the uh, the bacon things. Uh, it was a toss up between this and the other lemon chips. Uh, it, just too much for me. Didn't really like too it. Too much lemon. Um, it's just I mean not lemon but lime. It was just yeah. a weird flavor for yeah. both of them. It's too, it was too close for uh, the salt vinegar yeah. potato chips. And well, see, I like really, salt vinegar. It didn't really hit me as being decent. Okay, so the second best for me was the mayonnaise-flavored potato chips. 
Um, they were really good. Not like a whole lot of mayonnaise anyway. So I'm a mayonnaise fiend. So those were a nice surprise to see in the box for something that I, I really like. And um, so Alex, what was your second best? My second best, I had to go with the, uh, the, the coffee candy. Now I liked all the coffee things, uh, but it had a, a, a really good flavor for the size of product that it is. So I was that was pretty good. Okay, so the last category is our best out of the whole entire box, including the, the food, the candy, and everything. And I picked the Bianchi bar, which is the whoop, which is the caramel and peanut type bar, which reminded me a lot of our American candy called Nutrageous. Mm -hmm. This was delicious. This is probably my most favorite out of the box besides the mayonnaise chips. This and the mayonnaise chips for me were a toss up. And what was yours, Alex? So I had, I'm gonna spill stuff all over the place, but I had to go with the, uh, the coconut wafer. That was That's really good. good. It wasn't too sweet. It was, it's a good size. Uh, I had a really good coconut flavor taste. So that one, that one definitely ranked top marks for me. I'm sorry. On the back of the booklet that you receive, you get a clue for next month's box. So this is what it says. On the equator, there is a green jewel with dragons and temples that look really cool. We found a whole bunch of really good finds like noodles and melons and tamarind rinds. So that's kind of our clue as to what country we're going to next month. Let us know down below if you figure it out. I think that was going to do it for us. And we'll see you next time as we strive to make every day an experience.